Hey guys, so this is what uh, it's going to look like for us as we get through some of these online lectures and learning from home kind of style. So what I plan to do is just go through the notes very much like what we would do in class and hope it works out for the best. So far with my Chem 30s, they are liking this. I've gotten only positive reviews. They seem to enjoy the similarity to the uh, presentation that you guys would get in class versus what's happening here online. And then you guys get to rewind, review, do those sorts of things. All right, so um, we'll give it a shot. If we need to adjust, we will. But for right now, let's see if this works. All right, so gas laws. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see right here, but this is our overview. What I kind of wanted to point out here is that this is actually a really short, tiny, tidy little unit. Um, very mathematical with a few theories, but um, when I was back in Chem 20, I was sitting where you guys are, this was one of my easiest units. I found it to be straightforward and simple. If I practiced enough, it went really well, and for <laughs> a kid who was not the greatest student, I did really well with gas laws. So I'm hoping you guys will do so as well. So really, not a lot going on here. Most of these things that we're talking about here are going to be uh, formulas and ratios and relationships. There's a couple of little things like Avogadro's theory here, which are going to come up again for us in later units when we get to matching measurement with the predictions of chemical reactions. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward unit. So hopefully we can uh, do this one well online, little bite-sized chunks. First thing we have to get through is what gases are all about. So gases, as you may recall from states of matter and things like that, are really just a situation in which the particles have enough kinetic energy, the motion of the particles, to overcome any sort of intra, uh, intermolecular forces that they might have. One of the reasons why we go from bonding and all that intermolecular force stuff into this unit is because of the relationship that way. So what affects you if you are not really bound to all of your other adjacent molecules? The first thing is pressure. Now you guys haven't seen pressure since I think grade eight, and pressure is ultimately a measure of the amount of push or pull you would have per unit of area. We usually describe this as a Newton per meter squared. Now don't freak out about this because it's just kind of a tie in to previous courses. If you're gonna get into this sort of unit with pressure, you're looking at that in your like physics 30, physics 20, physics AP courses. We're going to simplify it a little bit, and what we want to do is look at just our units for pressure. How do we measure pressure in the metric system? We picked a really small unit. This is the same thing we did for mass. We picked a really small unit, like the gram. So we don't really use grams, and we don't really use pascals. So we have a more common unit, a thousand times larger, or the kilopascal. To relate these two things together, one kilopascal of pressure is actually 1,000 newtons of force per meter squared. Now you guys talked a little bit about newtons in Science 10. Uh, in our review, we talked a little bit about newtons when we were talking about how much you weigh. Um, your teacher, um, kind of a bit of a beer-bellied dude, and so what is a newton? Well, when I stand on a scale, my bathroom scale might say I weigh 190 pounds. Okay, that's about 88 kilograms. Neither of these are a measurement of force or push or pull. As you might recall, both of these are a measurement of the amount of stuff that makes up your chemistry teacher. So if I relate this to the force of gravity, which is the attractive force between me and the planet, I now get something measured in newtons, which Simplified is just your mass in kilograms times 10. So while I might have a mass of about 88 kilograms or so, that means I have a force that I'm applying to the ground whenever I stand on it of about 880 newtons. So it gives you something to relate to this number. 
If I was to spread myself over one square meter, I am roughly offering one kilopascal of pressure. It's not a lot. Okay? So, what does our atmosphere, which is made of gas, offer? Atmospheric pressure ranges between about 88, or sorry, 87 and 108 kilopascals. Here in Calgary, we are very typically around the 90 kilopascal uh, range. This is because of our exceptionally high altitude being so close to the mountains and having just less of a column of air sitting above us. If we were to all go on a field trip to Vancouver, the pressure would uh, rise to about 100 to 101 kilopascals. This is the typical pressure that we would see because there would be more mass of air sitting above us as we stand at sea level. So this can change with a lot of things. So what we do is we just kind of compare everything to sea level. The standard accepted sea level pressure is 101.325 kilopascals. That's a heck of a lot of digits. So what we're going to do is just simplify it to 101 kilopascals. There are all sorts of other units of pressure. We have the pascal, which is really tiny, not very good. Typical atmospheric pressure, as we just said, was 101.325. So, we talk about one atmosphere, the weight of the earth, uh, gas above you, as 101 kilopascals. Again, we're going to get rid of those decimal points just to keep things easy for you. When we were looking at this, or early scientists were looking at this, what they would do is they would set up a little table of mercury, they would stick a straw in it, and atmospheric pressure would push the mercury up the straw. This is not too different than the little game that you guys learned back in McDonald's years ago. Imagine having your um, cup of pop, and you put your straw into it, and you put your finger over the end of the straw, and you lift the straw out, and the straw held the pop. You put it to your mouth, and you let go of your finger, and the pop float in your mouth. All right, what ended up happening there was that you were... Air pressure was pushing down and pushing up on the liquid, pushing it up the straw, and when you closed the top, you didn't allow it to equalize, which meant you could kind of feed yourself the pop one straw at a time. Tor uh, Torcelli did this with mercury, and so we often talk about one atmosphere of pressure pushing mercury up a straw that was calibrated by 760 millimeters. This also got known as Tor. All right, so I would definitely spend some time with these various different measurements. Your textbook does a nice job of looking at them, and there'll be some practice questions that allow you to memorize these. All of these things are on your data sheet, so you can look them up. You don't necessarily have to memorize them, but there's lots of different ways that we can measure the amount of pressure on a system or a gas. There are two that I really need you to pay attention to. They are standard temperature and pressure, or STP. Now, STP is looking at sea level. All right, this is kind of our sea level set of conditions, but it's not a comfortable set of conditions. You have a standard one atmosphere of pressure at that point, so you have the full weight of the Earth's gases and atmosphere above you. Simplify it to 101 kilopascals. But the temperature, which will also affect things, brr, really cold. So STP, while well, a standard and a really good standard is not the one that we prefer the most. The one that we like better is SATP, or Standard Ambient Temperature and Pressure. We're keeping the numbers simplified, so we're going to lower the pressure a little bit, and we're going to warm it up to something close to room temperature. Please take some time and remember these two sets of conditions of temperature and pressure. All right, what I want uh, to do now is just end this video 10 minutes is kind of my limit before things start to get ugly with D2L and YouTube. So I'm going to continue on the next page in part two of our lesson. All right, see you guys in the next video.